Chris Young here from HomeKit Geek. Subscribe, like, share. It's always appreciated. So today on Smart Home Stories, we're going to look at a cool way to cool down. You're going to need a temperature sensor. You're going to need a smart plug. Anyone will do. And you're going to need an analog fan. So with just those three pieces and a little bit of Apple HomeKit sprinkled in, we're going to make the fan turn on when it gets too hot. Pretty simple. Let's take a look. So it is still just trying to be spring here in Canada. So I'm going to simulate this by having my Echo B remote sensor there on the floor in front of a heater. The heater, you can see off in the distance, there's that analog fan. And on the left, there is the Apple iPad. So basically, I am just trying to fry this little um, Echo B remote. And if we watch carefully, what we're going to see is we're going to see suddenly the Echo B sensor is going to turn to 24 degrees and bam, look at that, the fan comes on. Couldn't be easier than that. And that's really what a smart home is all about, is it's about taking those things that we're probably going to want to have happen anyways and just doing it automatically for us, adapting to our environment. So let's take a look at how we set this up. So we're over here in the iPad application. You can see we've got the vocal link already set up as a fan. So that's my smart plug. It's a vocal link PM2. You can check out the review here. And it's already 23 degrees in the office. We've got the Echo B remote sensor here. So this is doing a temperature sensor. But again, you could be using a Hue motion sensor, which has a temperature sensor or other things. So we're going to go into automations and we're going to say, hey, I want a sensor to detect something. But wait a minute. Temperature is not in here. So that's kind of a problem. And that's something to be aware of. So we're going to have to go over to the third party home app and I'll put a link to this in the, um, the video so we're here details. over in the automations section and we're going to set up a new automation. So we're going to have to um, push that little button and say create a new trigger. What kind of a trigger? It's going to be an event trigger. And of course this event trigger, we're going to call it something descriptive like office is too hot. We always want to make sure it's something really descriptive so that we can come back afterwards and figure out what's going on. So when this event happens, so we're going to go down and look into the My Office and look for that Echo B temp sensors or whatever temperature sensor you're using here. So we'll go down and find My Office. There we go. This is my uh, kind of where I play with all the stuff. So we're going to, there it is, the Echo B temperature. And we're going to click on the current temperature to make sure that this is active. So now that we've activated that, we're going to click on services and click on done to get back out of here. And now you can see we have a when this happens. So what we're really trying to do is to say when it goes above a certain temperature. And I'm going to say when it goes above 24 degrees Celsius, which is kind of hot for a house. At that point, I want to turn the fan on. So we're going to go back down again and we're going to find that same temperature sensor here. So again, this is our conditional. So we're going to find that Echo B temperature sensor. We're going to select that, click on that, the little, the dot there. And then we're going to left click on services. So now it's going to show up under the, under the condition, but you can see here it says equal to 22.7. And that's not what I want. I want it when it's greater than say, say 23 degrees, right? So when, if it's 24, Right, so I could say greater or equal to 24, or I could just say greater than 23. So I'm going to go back into the characteristic here and make sure that I set that to 23 degrees, understanding that I'm going to say if it's greater than 23. So if it's 23.5, it's 23.8, whatever it is, it's greater than that. We're going to we're going to create a action, and what action are we going to take? Well, we know we want to turn the fan on. So how do we do that? We plug the analog fan into the vocal link smart plug, whatever smart plug you're using, and we just turn the power state to on. It's really that simple. So we're going to go find the vocal link outlet here. We're going to click on the power state and we're going to flip the toggle so it goes over to the right and turns green, which says, yes, we're going to turn the power on on this. Done. We're going to click again. We're going to make sure that we see what's going on. Maybe we want to add a countdown action to disable it after, say, I don't know, an hour, you don't want this thing running all the time, we can do that. And then we have to enable the trigger. And that's really it. So the last thing we're going to do is go back and look at our automation, which is office is too hot and make sure everything is as we expect it to be. And oh, look at that. I actually left a little, uh, little Easter egg for you here. I didn't change it from when the current temperature is between that range. I want it to be any change. So if it changes at all, and it's greater than 23 degrees, then we'll go. Because obviously, if it's between zero to that 21, it just wouldn't work. 
So again, you have to play around with these things a little bit to see really how they're going to, uh, going to work in your environment. But that's basically it. Current temperature, if there's any change, and that change results in it being greater than 23 degrees, you turn the power on and then the analog fan then turns on. This must be an analog fan. That's the other thing I want to point out is it has to be an analog fan or this won't work. Digital fans will not remember their state. So that's important. So let me know what you guys think of this. Is it useful? Is it something you might do in your house in the summer? Let me know. Comments, questions, you know where to put them down below. Check out the details for the products that I've talked about in this particular video. Subscribe if you haven't. Likes are always appreciated. And if you want to learn a little more about making your house just a little bit smarter using Apple HomeKit, please check out the video details below for a coupon code for my Udemy course. Thanks.